Well, folks, this is our second Sunday where we are here uh, taping this in an empty building for uh, being together uh, this way, even though it is uh, uh, not what we want to do. We, as soon as possible, want to have the entire body gathered together, uh, the Sunday school classes together, the um, uh, service time with the amazing worship time we have together, and the time in the Word of God. And, uh, but this is the situation we're in and we're trying to make the most of it. And so I wanted to bring you another word for this Sunday. And I do encourage you, boy, there's so many good uh, preachers out there, you know, make your most of your time uh, with the uh, internet and the TV and the podcast. Uh, make sure the preacher uh, is preaching the Word of God. And whenever they speak to you uh, and they give you a full message, Make sure the point of their message is the point of what the text said, and that's a gu guide for you and a guard for you when you're listening to preachers preach. Uh, you want to make sure they're preaching the Word of God to you and not their own ideas. And uh, these little times we're having uh, these couple weeks are more of devotional uh, ideas as we and thoughts from the scriptures as we look at just the basics. But I want to tell you, there was a frail old man who went to live with his son and his daughter-in-law and his grandson. And every night the family ate together, but because of the old man's shaky hands and blurred vision, uh, he, there were some messes. He would sometimes have the milk pour back out of his mouth and he'd have uh, the, the peas also you know, fall off his spoon and uh, he even broke a plate or two. And finally, in exasperation, uh, the son and daughter-in-law actually put another table in the corner uh, where they put the old man there and because he had uh, broken plates and other things they gave him a wooden bowl to uh, eat from there in the corner while they were over here and uh, they were separated and um, one night, the father noticed that his son, the grandson of the old man, was getting together some wood and, and, and carving at it and working at it. And the father said, uh, son, what are you doing right now? And the son looked at his father and the mother was within earshot and he said, I am making a wooden bowl so you and mommy will have something to eat from when I grow up. And that pierced the father and mother in that moment and they realized that they were teaching their son to dishonor the elderly. And so they ended the wooden bowl in the corner program and again brought back together um, uh, the whole family to eat together. And all of a sudden, the messes didn't seem like such a big deal anymore because the family was able to gather together. And I hope that one of the things that happens on the other side of COVID-19 is that we realize how much we do need each other and how much the young can learn from the ones who are older. Even as uh, young people have faced one of their first crises here, there is so much to learn from those who have gone through many other things like September 11, 2001. If you talk to somebody in their mid-30s, they're able to give some perspective because they went through that. If you talk to somebody that is in their 70s or older, they went through the scary times of the riots of the 1960s and the Vietnam War. And if you talk to somebody in their 90s, um, then you can hear about World War II and how uh, tough it was, but the nation came together and got through that time. And the Lord built us to be in relationship and to learn across the generations. And it's one of the reasons why we so value our Sunday mornings together as intergenerational times to learn from one another and to grow together. And I hope you reprioritize in the days after this uh, how great it is to worship together across the generations. Recently, I was talking to one of our members. I think it's our oldest member, actually. He's in his 90s. And I asked him, I said, have you seen anything like this? And he said, not just like this, no. Uh, where, uh, you know, of course, during wars and other things, there just wasn't this uh, pushing the people apart like we've had uh, to try to get over this pandemic. And so uh, we need to, as quickly as possible, when we're able to gather together again, uh, learn from and love uh, those, and even now be checking in on them and growing together. And I wanna turn, if you will, to Proverbs chapter three, 
and look through the first 12 verses there about what we can learn uh, from uh, the Word of God and how it specifically relates to uh, prioritizing our faith during this time. Solomon's writing and he says, My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. I love that. Be people of truth and mercy and think of that as a necklace around your neck, something that people can see. They can see you being merciful. They can see you being truthful. Uh, and you will have lots of opportunities during these uh, times together in your homes and in so few gathering to uh, have, uh, instead of an angry reaction, uh, or if you do have an angry reaction, quickly asking for forgiveness, mercy and truth being known by those things at such a time as this. Write them on the tablet of your heart and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Uh, a gentle answer turns away wrath, right? That will be true as you talk to your fellow man during this time, and it will be noticed in heaven. I love the book of Acts where it says that uh, Cornelius' life of uh, doing good and almsgiving had come up before the Lord as a memorial. It had risen to the Lord, and, and God had taken notice of this kind man, this giving man. And uh, it's not that those things were going to save Cornelius, but it's evident from that text how seriously God takes us caring for and loving one another and loving our neighbor and even loving our enemies. Uh, truth and uh, mercy, like necklaces that we wear. And then maybe you've heard these verses. For some of them, they're your favorite. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. As we have seen the inability to watch sports like we did, to travel like we used to, uh, during this time where that has been stripped away from us, we've seen that we make many plans apart from the Lord, don't we? Many things we are going to do, and God's kind of brought them all to a stop here so that we would reorganize our priorities around our faith in Him. And I am hoping that on the other side of this, people seriously reevaluate. I'm hoping entire towns seriously reevaluate all the extra things they have put on Sundays and even Wednesday nights that distract us from full service to the Lord. And even if that is not the message the world gets, I'm hoping that many that name the name of Christ will reprioritize and say, nope, I will not do that on the day that I'm to worship the Lord. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. Verse 7, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. I think about how that corresponds to the great prayer in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, where God said, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sins. Uh, we have been wise in our own eyes far too long in this country. We think we know things we don't know, and the Lord ha can have His way of just stopping everything. A month ago, nobody would have, could have convinced any of us the world could come to a halt like this, a time of searching and analysis like this. And this little virus has done that uh, in this world to get us back to the basics. And the basics are right here. Now, he says, if you will fear the Lord and depart from uh, evil, it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. So many illnesses and so many conditions are psychosomatic because of sin. Uh, we have undue stress. Uh, and unconfessed sin will do that to you. It'll zap your strength. It'll uh, take, uh, it'll wear your brain. And there's many different medical studies that show that in different ways. But if you, during this time, will turn back to God, a person that fears God cares more what God thinks than what people think, period. And so we spend so much time hoping others are pleased with us. Um, and yet the root question is, is God pleased with us? Will God be pleased if I make this decision? If everybody else is doing a sinful thing, will I still do what's right? Will I fear the Lord and depart from evil? If you do, it'll be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. And then in verse 9, he says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of your, all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. I hope this is a time where you're considering your financial priorities as well. Uh, you know, the scriptural path for giving is to give your best to the Lord, not your leftovers. And so I love what Pastor Lamar used to teach. I teach it too, 
that uh, with your paychecks, you ought to put 10% tithe to the Lord right off the top, and you ought to put 10% in savings and later investments. And if you can live on 80% in a world that lives on 110%, <laughs> then you will be well set for future crises. And this is a time to make sure those are your kind of commitments. Verse 11, my son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son in whom he delights. This is a time where we have uh, all been put in the penalty box, so to speak. You know, the penalty box, if a player does something wrong, they're in there for two minutes and then they get to come back out on the ice. Hopefully, it'll end very soon and we'll be able to resume a normal uh, path of living. But I hope for many of us, it's a new normal that goes back to the priorities God would have on our lives, putting Him first, trusting Him, growing in Him, uh, showing mercy and truth everywhere we go, truth on our lips, mercy on our hearts. I think about how um, Micah the prophet uh, says, what does the Lord require of you, O man, but to do good, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Proverbs has that kind of wisdom too. What we want to do is do justly ourselves. We want to do everything the scripture would have us do. We want to love mercy. We recognize that both in our own lives and others, people fall short of the glory of God. And we want to love them right where they are in hopes that they'll turn to Him. We always want to walk humbly with our God. Pride messes so many things up. Folks, we've been humbled as a nation. We've been humbled as individuals. We've been humbled as a church through all these things. And hopefully that humility, that trust in the Lord, will lead to uh, a, um, a turning back to Him and back to Him that uh, puts our nation back on course. Uh, God is right to judge America that defies Him and doesn't do what He says. Um, we sing God bless America, but uh, we have been under His chastening hand, His disciplining hand because of our defying Him and it's time to turn back to Him. We can't do that for anybody but ourselves, but the question I want to leave you with is, if revival in America depended on what you're doing right now to get your heart before the Lord, would it come? Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you are a God who is patient with your people, and you're patient with nations too, Lord. You could very easily judge us and you'd be right to do so. You don't owe us anything. And we have defied you, we've rebelled against you, we've shaken our fist toward heaven. God, I thank you that your great love makes you willing to forgive those who turn back to you, those who repent. And so, Lord, I pray this will be a time where each and every one of us will reprioritize our lives and our relationships around you and your glory, God. In Christ's name I pray, amen. <laughs>